Good morning and welcome to an all new Eye of the Tiger. I'm Brian Nuevo. And I'm Kaya Whitney. As you may have seen on our social media last Tuesday, student government is currently selling 25 senior lot parking spaces. We go to Nick Chang with more. Thanks, Brian. I'm standing here in the senior lot where chosen spots will be sold to seniors this year. Assistant Principal Matt Pipitone believes that the first shot at selling these spots will go well. It is a pilot, so depending on how it works, how it goes, how it's received, we will either continue it, discontinue it, tweak it. I anticipate in all likelihood we'll probably be, we'll most likely be continuing it. This is something that's done at all the other schools in our district and some other schools in neighboring districts. Student Gov Advisor Brent Maddox believes that selling these spots will help campus culture and help the senior parking situation. And it's a win-win because students get a personalized parking space, they get to go exactly where they want to park, they don't have to fight for parking spaces, and so we worked with our administrative team and, and just came up with a number that we felt was fair so we didn't take every space in the parking spot, and so that's just 25 slots. The money used for selling these parking spots will go to funding Student Gov's retreat this summer. I think it would be better to fund like school events, like dances, for example, because like we don't really have like a big budget for dances compared to the money that they bring in. Um, so it would make more sense for them to go to school events. Student Gov member Hannah Heaton is excited to park in these spots next year as a senior, but is worried about how she will park while being a junior. Well, I think that's a really cool opportunity for seniors and it allows you to get to school later, which I like and I'll be likely to take that that opportunity on next year but as a junior I'm not loving it because I will have to show up earlier to make sure I can get one of the spots remaining. The last day to submit paperwork to claim a spot is next Monday. Band director Matt Coatney is planning to unify band courses next year. Band director Matt Coatney pushed for a long band course where students could develop their skill sets throughout the year. The problem we're running into now is where we'll maybe have two-thirds of our band um, all year long and then we'll be rotating in another third of the students each semester and when you're trying to think about growth and, and momentum building and, and progress it's hard to do that when you move part of your your band in the right direction and then you got to start all over again each semester alto saxophone player Alyssa Abbott sees the change securing the students a better group dynamic that is really important to grow the program because it's very tough to have a new group of kids come in, you know where they all are musically, and some of them leave, some of them don't. And we gain new people, old people, it's just, it's basically restarting, you know, going from scratch with all the chemistry and how people play together. Fifth base in the drum line, Isabella Langley predicts students who struggle with schedule flexibility, such as herself, will no longer take the course. I, myself, wouldn't be able to take marching. There's a lot of classes I need to take my junior and senior year, and I made a special spot for marching band. If I'd have to be in all your class, I wouldn't be able to take it. Kootenai feels the value of continuity in the program outlays potential lower participation. This move is geared towards providing the best experience for the kids who want to do band and want to make this their, their priority. Um, so for students who, who look at this and say it's a big time commitment, sometimes it is. Um, and, and it may, you know, you may have to choose an activity. You can read more on these band changes and senior lot spaces in this Monday's print edition of Eye of the Tiger. Don Taylor of EOTSN will deliver some sports news after this commercial break. Over 20 million teens already have their license. What are you waiting for? All Good Driving School is here to help you get on the road quickly and affordably. All Good Driving School has DMV approved online driver's education, free DMV practice tests, and quality behind the wheel training. Call 916-363-2669 for more information. Good morning and welcome to this Friday's edition of EOTSN. I'm Dominic Taylor. Girls varsity basketball is currently still undefeated and while their success is due to the play of the team as a whole, one freshman has been able to adapt to the high level of play and be an important contributor early. We go to Dean F. Stothieu with more. Although at first she went through a learning curve, freshman varsity girls basketball player Alyssa Sandal is embracing the high level experience and benefiting from it. Um, it's a little nerve wracking to me. It was at first, but not really anymore because it's kind of a learning experience for me. Um, I get to play with like high elite basketball, um, learn new things, you know, get better and also I feel like it's helping me get 
recruited and it's going to help me, you know, go through my college. In order to compete as a freshman at a high school level such as varsity, Sandal puts herself through multiple forms of training. Um, I have a personal trainer that I go to every Thursdays. Um, I work with him on my ball handling, my shooting, you know, just conditioning. And then I also practice basketball outside at my house, go to the park. I run a lot um, to keep me in shape. As a former freshman on girls varsity basketball, Isabel Sanders understands the difficulty of contributing early and already sees the positive impact she has on the team. It's kind of fit right into the team basketball wise and the tempo is I think a little bit more faster with her and um, I think overall our scoring and she just kind of creates plays for us. Even though the team has multiple grade levels represented from freshman to senior, the one factor that is consistent is talent. I feel like because the team's a height, we have a lot of speed, we have a lot of talent, and I feel like the more talent we have, um, the more we're like the clo the higher we're going to go. In other sports news, Roseville Boys Varsity Basketball lost an away game at rival Wood Creek by a score of 83 to 50, putting their current record at six and three. They will play in the River City Varsity Tournament this weekend. Boys Varsity Soccer beat Vista Del Lago three to zero and will play Wood Creek tonight. And Wrestley lost a close meet to Oakmont earlier in the week. Finally, EOTSN would also like to give special recognition to girls varsity soccer for tying Davis soccer 0-0. What's so special about a tie? Try the fact that Davis varsity soccer has had a record of 47-0-4 the last two years and in that time has never been kept scoreless until last Tuesday when they crossed paths with the Tigers. Congratulations to girls varsity soccer on the outstanding performance. And that's all in your home for Roseville High School sports, top plays, breakdowns, and more. I have the Tiger Sports Network, EOTSN. Have a Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, and a Happy New Year. And now we go over to entertainment. Addie Panasuk has been speed painting since the sixth grade and is going to a church in Reno to speed paint this weekend. Junior Addie Panasuk is going to be speed painting at a church in Reno, Nevada this weekend. Well, a church in Reno contacted me and they want me to paint Mary, Joseph, and baby Jesus. So I'll be painting that. She gets her inspiration for speed painting from her dad, who's been doing it for a long time. Well, my dad would always perform on stage, like normally churches, and I always was like kind of forced to go. So I got into it pretty quick, and I found it really fascinating how like someone could go on stage and just show how art can be created alive, I guess. Have a happy holidays and a great new year, and now we go back to news. To get a closer look at this year's Holiday Dance Showcase, we're looking into the choreography of one specific number. Cooper Badley has more with the story. RHS alum Kaylee Bain choreographed and directed a dance for this winter dance show. We spoke with Bain from UC Santa Cruz on the phone and she said, I really enjoyed teaching and choreographing. It was really nice to come back after a long time. Senior Brooke Raby, who's in the dance, gained valuable experience learning from a student. There are some studio dancers, so they kind of know what they're talking about in dancing and they know some more um, technical stuff than the teacher would know. Senior Annie Heron, who is also in the dance, enjoyed learning from a former dance member. I think it's really cool that Kaylee came back to teach because she's an amazing dancer and it was cool to learn her choreography directly from her. And it was a really good dance. You can see the dance show tonight and tomorrow night at 7 p.m. There's also a matinee at 2 p.m. tomorrow. Because finals are next week, this will be our last show before winter break. Period 3 and 4 finals will be on Tuesday, and periods 1 and 2 finals will be next Wednesday. That's it for us today on Eye of the Tiger. And remember, we're always on at eyeofthetigernews.com. Good luck on finals and enjoy your winter break. Happy holidays and see you next year.